A woman reaches a certain age. When someone says to her, or her inner critic says, at your age, you wouldn't, you shouldn't, you can't. Well, here on a certain age, we celebrate those women who can, who will, and who do amazing things. Today's guest, with over 10,000 hours of on-screen and stage acting, is Sonia Satra, the former star of Guiding Light and One Life to Live. She guest starred on national commercials, popular TV series, and the docudramas, including American Genius, Sons of Liberty, and the Emmy-winning The Men Who Built America. Sonia is also the founder of, and CEO of Modisize, an award-winning wellness program that combines movement with mindset. She now travels the world, helping people reach their potential and greatness. Welcome to the show today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm so excited to have you because you've done amazing things all your life and, and just <laughs> well, fun things. Yeah. And I'd love to start right at the beginning. You said that getting into your career was easy for you. Well, it was easy because it was I wasn't trying. <laughs> I literally was playing tennis with my mom and a guy came up to me and said, hey, would you be interested in being in this local hair ad? So I was a teenager and thought, cool, like I get my hair done, I get some free shampoo, you know? yeah. <laughs> so I said yes and, and I did it and that was actually the beginning. Um, and so then it, then it took, you know, a couple little twists and turns, but um, I thought when I got to college, I thought, well, maybe I could earn some extra money doing some modeling since I had done this. And uh, I did what you shouldn't do, which is <laughs> look in the back of the New York Times for modeling jobs. <laughs> but that's not really it. So I had a couple interviews with people who were like, give us $10,000, we'll make you a star. And uh, I knew that was not real. Besides, I didn't have $10,000. So um, uh, then through a friend of a friend of a friend, um, I ended up at a, at a commercial agency. And I you know, went in with my little portfolio thinking I was doing modeling and they were like, oh, here, could you read this? It was a Pizza Hut script. Ooh. And I'm like, all right, you know, I, I can read, you know? <laughs> and so I read it and they were like, wow, that was really great. You know, have you ever thought of doing commercials? I was like, no, would you like to? <laughs> I'm like, sure. And then, yes, I had that beginner's luck once again. I went out on my very first commercial and I booked it. And, and you then, booked it. So as a pizza girl or something else exciting? No, it wasn't the Pizza Hut. Oh, it was right. actually, I was, uh, no, it was for a, um, a grocery store. It was oh. AMP at the time. Okay. Um, and then and then I had a flurry. I just moved into being like the fast food girl. Because the third commercial audition I went on was McDonald's. And I booked that. <laughs> and so, and that was the beginning of my special orders down at Santa's. Or here, can I take your order? You know, <laughs> and I did them all. McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Burger Haven, all of them. Do you still have all the jingles in your head? <laughs> so I know them and I ate a lot of fast food. <laughs> well, you hide it really well. Yeah. The fast food. Well, that was when I learned that you don't actually eat it or you don't have to. It's kind of gross. You sort of chew on it and then you can spit it out. Because the, I, when I did the Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial, they literally brought out a tray of chicken because you do so many takes that if you, I would have eaten like 20 pieces of chicken. <laughs> I would have been rolling out of there. So it wasn't really feasible to do that. So you had to kind of learn to roll with the punches on that. <laughs> and, I've, and this is off topic, but I've heard a rumor that most of the food is faked anyway. Cause like, if you look at a commercial, my burger never looks as like the burger on TV. Perfect. Well, they bring out real food for okay. the for the actors. For the bite. All for right. the bite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you're not biting into some silicon or what I don't know, whatever grossness. But then they do. They have uh, actual food photographers, and, and that's a whole profession: food photography and food filming and creating the food to make it look exactly like you know they want it to look. Oh my so, goodness. yeah, that's a whole art, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the secret of fast food. The food art. <laughs> All right, yeah. so you have the inside scoop on fast food. I got that, yeah. And then where, because your career just kept going in different directions, but kept going forward. What well, it did. So I did a lot of commercials, and then I was out visiting my sister for a, a summer vacation, and uh, I thought, you know, if, if I really wanted to do this acting thing, then maybe this is where I should be. Um, I hadn't really done a lot of what they call legit or theatrical work. I'd mm -hmm. mostly just done commercials. I had screen tested actually once 
for Guiding Light, but oh. I didn't get it that oh. time. Um, but that was the only thing I had done, but I thought, well, if this is what I want, then this is where I should be. So I went home and I packed up my old beat up Honda Accord and drove across country. <laughs> to Hollywood. To Hollywood, yeah. and there I was. And, and that was a little reality struck there, because I realized this is actually a business, and I had mm. no idea what I was doing. I, you know, everything had just kind of flowed. I had done these commercials, I had done this modeling, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, you get rejected a lot in this field once you really start pursuing it. Um, so I studied acting and I studied mindset and, um, and then after a whole lot of auditions I, and eight screen tests, I always say that because it's, you know, persistence right. is a key, but after eight screen tests. For one, for, for one show you did eight screen tests? No, for oh, eight kept doing them. different soaps. Oh, you hit all of them. I okay. hit all of them and some okay. of them more than once. Okay. <laughs> I circled back and I ended up landing the Lucy Cooper Spalding. And wow. you were Lucy Cooper Spalding for four years yeah. on Guiding Light. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I want to hear some of the inside stories here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Not many people get to talk to Sonia Satcher about being Lucy, Lucy Cooper. Lucy Cooper. Um, what was awkward? I heard that there were some really awkward moments on set. So you everybody always asks me when you're on a soap, like, yeah. what's it like to kiss all the guys? You know, <laughs> and I was like, but I hold the prize for being the longest running virgin on daytime TV. <laughs> so, so you didn't get to kiss all the guys. I didn't get to kiss all the guys, but then we ended up having our very first love scene. And uh, it had been a long, a lot of years building up to that. And it was actually very sweet because, you know, they closed the set and Rick Hurst, who was an amazing actor and just a real gentleman, he came in with a rose that day. And then I got to experience my first love scene. And that is the most awkward thing on the planet. <laughs> You, you're just in these really just contorted, awkward positions that look really beautiful <laughs> on camera, but are just not They're just not natural. Natural, or... like, yeah, just lift your chin up, no, a little further down, look like lovingly into their eyes as you're like not even being able to see, see into their eyes. <laughs> you're not actually looking at them. You're right? not. <laughs> So it was, it, it's a very bizarre experience to do love scenes. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah. But you also had really serious moments on that soap. And I think I heard a story that you actually were able to touch the life of a fan. Yeah. Through your experience. That was, that was a really powerful thing. I was actually leading up, leading up to that scene, uh. um, I was in a rape storyline. So I had gone on a first date with somebody and been date raped. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and to the credit of Guiding Light, they really did a good job on that story. And they really, um, tried to look into the psychology of it. And I actually, at the time had taken a self-defense class and there were a number of real rape victims and so I uh -huh. asked the writers I was like could you include this in addition to other therapy things for Lucy I also did a lot of shows where I would give date rape um, or rape hotlines that I you know were so that people mm -hmm. could really get help and one of the most sort of moving and fulfilling days was when I got a letter from a fan who had said when Lucy got help I got help because she had oh. been raped the same time Lucy had been raped. And that was when I realized, wow, you know, you can really have an impact. And soaps can be crazy and have all these fun, strange storylines, <laughs> but they also had some right. really serious, serious ones. ones. And, uh, and people, I think because you're in their living room every single day, mm -hmm. you know, you're really touching them in a very different way. And, and that, was, that was pretty amazing because I thought, that's one person who actually wrote, you know, there probably were others, so, yeah. Right. So you made a real difference. I think that's just, that must feel so good to... Absolutely, absolutely. Right. No, it, it was, uh, it, it was life-changing. And in fact, you know, sometimes I think, gosh, I wonder if that was the moment that later led me to wanting to help people, because it had such an impact on me being able to change someone's life to know that they got help and that they weren't going to be hurting or they were able mm -hmm. to heal or at least go on the journey of healing was uh, it, it's just nothing's better. I get chills right, still thinking right. about it. You know, I mean, that's, that's, 
Yeah, that's important. That's really living life to its fullest. And, um, you know, we sadly can't always control what happens to us, but we do have the power to go beyond um, mm -hmm. those things. And uh, when you can help somebody do that, that's pretty incredible. It touches you, yeah. 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 All right, so now where did your career go from there? So you were with Guiding Light for four years. So I was Guiding Light with four years, and it was a phenomenal experience. I worked with some really amazingly talented actors. I've oh, got Emmy nominated so many times. And, uh, and I could have stayed. I had my storyline, I had a lot of storyline. But there was that little part inside of me that mm -hmm. thought, gosh, am I ever going to play another character? I have to leave. <laughs> I have to leave this really great job and go back to being rejected again and try. And I, I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. I didn't have a property or anything. So all those things that usually hold you back. So I thought, this is it. I had to take a chance. So I headed back to LA. <laughs> And like this time, I, I suddenly went back with a different belief. In the beginning, I was just like, hey, anything's possible. Someone's made it. Why couldn't I? But this time, I had this feeling of, oh, maybe that was a fluke. You know, I am never going to work again, and I'm going to lose everything. And it's crazy. I really started to embody that. Every, everything, every part of my life started to embody this belief that I was never going to work again. And auditions, there was one audition, oh my goodness, it was so bad. I literally, with every single line, took a step backwards, unconsciously. I didn't realize I was doing it, but it was like, I'm not going to get the job. You're not going to hire me. Let me get out of this room as fast as I could until I so hit the you, back. Oh my, <laughs> you hit the door? The room, yes. Oh. I didn't get that job, needless to say. Um, you know, no I saw that part coming. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. that was, and it, I didn't get a single job in a year and a half. Wow. Yeah, so I actually lost everything. I was going broke. I, I, was, I was in a relationship that was falling apart. My health, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was going out drinking, commiserating with all my other actor friends who weren't at working. And, and it was just this complete shift where I went from success and everything going great to suddenly just rock bottom. And is that really, that's another, I guess, realistic look at Hollywood is all the people who aren't making it. Oh, for sure. I right. mean, only I think the top one and a half percent are actually mm -hmm. making a living. So the fact wow. that I had done that was pretty was amazing huge. in yeah. itself. And, uh, and yeah, and now suddenly I was experiencing the other side. But it was, I had one of those really incredible aha moments because I was so broke, I was turtle sitting. <laughs> somebody Tradition. trying to make enough money to earn groceries for that week. And I was sitting up on this bluff and it was one of those just gorgeous magical days and I'm overlooking the Pacific Ocean and the wind's blowing and the birds are chirping and I'm thinking, wow, I've created this life that I don't want right now because suddenly I was broke. But in that moment I realized I had used all of these mindset tools to create success. Mm -hmm. And now I was using the same ones to create failure. You know, I had visualized being on TV right, and now right. I was visualizing failure, Failing. right? And then I was asking really powerful questions like, what can I do? How can I make this better? And here I was like, why won't anybody hire me? You know, you back yourself into a wall. Why? Literally. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Yeah. And uh, affirmations, I would walk around like, you could do it, you could do it and positive things. And here I was just like, I can't do it. I'm never going to work again. I got those results. I, you know, I took lots of action in both cases, mm -hmm. but the results were a direct correlation of that mindset. Of your that I action, had. right? Yeah, and so that was when I realized, well, gosh, I better turn this around and fast. <laughs> and so I started doing moda size mm -hmm. without even knowing what moda size was at that point because I needed to get back in shape and to start like getting healthy and to shift that mindset. So I started running in this, there was a canyon in Santa Monica, and I would run up this canyon and I would ask better questions like, what can I do today that's going to move me forward? What's one action I can take that will get bigger results? You know, uh, how can I do it better? I would do affirmations. I'd visualize being back on TV. 
And, and then I would do this all the way up the mountain and then up at the top, there was this little bridge. And I noticed when I stood on the bridge, anything I would yell out because it was in this canyon mm -hmm. would echo back. So I was like, I'm gonna yell out what I wanna hear. So I'd yell out, you got the job. And then I'd hear back, you got the job. <laughs> and then I'd celebrate. Right, like I would right. jump up and down as if I had really heard, you got the job. <laughs> Getting it into my mind and my body. And then three weeks later, I booked a national commercial. Three months later, coming down from that canyon run, I got the call asking me to come and play psycho nurse Barbara on One Life to Live. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the One Life to Live job. That's I amazing. I got the job. I literally was going down, got the call. You got the job. Like it was those exact words. And it, you're going, was it the echo or is it the real Right. Thing? I was like, wait a second, could you say that again? <laughs> I want to make sure it's not the voice in my head. Right, right. No, but you talked yourself back into a career on TV. Completely. And, that, and it, was, it was so astounding, the difference. And it was such a turning point for me realizing we really do have power. This stuff works. Right, right. You know, you can make it work for you. You can make it work against you. And, um, and we all can hit those, those difficult moments, but you can turn it around. Energetically, you can put that out there. You can shift the visualize, you know, the visions that you mm -hmm. have in your mind. You can ask those better questions. You'll take better actions. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna put that out there and people are gonna feel it, notice it, and, and bring you know, it back. embrace it. Yeah. Because you've had a lot of ups and downs, right? So I mean, your career started really easily. You got right. this killer job. Yeah. You tanked. Totally. You got another <laughs> killer job. Yeah. So where was where was the next bump in the road? Or actually, how, tell me about some other shows you've been on because you've been on a bunch of shows. Yeah, well, I did. So, so I you, did you One Life off. to Live for a while, and that was that was really fun because it was the total opposite from I was because you a were the psychotic. Psycho nurse. I was okay. yeah, killing a couple of people and <laughs> all right, <laughs> you know, um, it was really just out of love. Yeah. People were just in my way. They needed to die. They needed to move <laughs> out of my way. <laughs> okay. So psycho nurse took care psycho of that. Psycho nurse took care of it. Uh, yeah, until I went to jail. Um, but then, <laughs> no, then I had yeah. Then I died. then I got to be in some of all these mini series that mm -hmm. were really cool. And one of my favorite was um, I got recently to play in the history of Playboy. I got to play Gloria Steinem. Oh, tell I us know. About that. Talk about That's awesome. an icon of women's empowerment. Right. So yeah, because she and Hugh Hefner kind of had it out. They didn't okay. really get along so well. So this was a bit of a scene where I was going into the Playboy Mansion to interview him. And, uh, you know, he thought that he had it all figured out, but he didn't. <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> yeah. So let's jump ahead a little bit now. So here you're at the, your Gloria Stein. I'm this fabulous. But then it came down again, and then you found a solution. And I want to talk about that so we can show the world what you've discovered. So. Yeah, so, well, yeah, so then I came back and I was, then I had a, my daughter, and uh, so there was a slight, when I was pregnant, there was a little bit of a hiatus, and then I came back and I was trying, at the time when I was pregnant, I got certified as a life coach, because I had always had a coach, and I was so into this empowerment and mindset that I thought, well, maybe I could, like, really help people. And uh, so I was trying to do a little bit of everything, the acting, the, the coaching, and then I'd sort of learned a little bit about speaking, and but then I was just exhausted because I had this new baby, and anyway, I wasn't really doing anything really mm -hmm. well, and nothing was really taking off. And I was at the gym for my, you know, 20-minute workout because that's all I had time for with a new baby. <laughs> and I was riding on this, the treadmill, and I was watching some bad news that I was just getting really depressed at, and I thought, you know, I know these mindset tools work but I'm not using them. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it again, or I'm doing it a little bit more negatively. I need to turn this around. I was like, wouldn't it be great if you just, if you could bring in a vision board or if you could do it while you're working out, that would be really efficient and effective as a new mom. I was thinking, how can I like- How efficient <laughs> can I be? <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and then I was doing that. I was like, well, what if you did? What if I was running? And what if I was asking questions? That's kind of what I did on that mountain. And it worked. And, and it so worked. at that time I was learning on this treadmill and I was like, yeah, maybe it'd be sort of like motivational exercise. And then I'd stop and I'd like write it on my phone. and. And I really created 
the whole business on a treadmill. <laughs> like I motorized, motorized. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, and this, that was so how this was it all the started. Opening of was, your life now, the new thing. So tell us more about motorize. I want. Yeah, to so hear how it works. I want to see how it works. Absolutely. Motorize so, motorize. So, motorize, you know, the, the literal is mm. motivational exercise, but it's not really to motivate you to exercise necessarily, although it's a bit of a byproduct of it. Um, but it's really combining those mindset tools with exercise. And what's so cool is when I started to research it, mm -hmm. it was all this brain science was coming out about it. And what they know is when you exercise, a protein is released in your brain that actually creates new neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And when you work out, it's a prime time to be creative, to focus, okay. to learn, to remember things. And so it's taking all of that to create the life that you really want. So we have a little mindset reset process, and uh, I could show it to you. All right. We I could, could, do, I could we're do, gonna, do some mind resetting. Mindset reset, mindset yes. Mindset reset. Exactly. I so, love it. All right. You know, in the DVD, we do right. full-on workout. But you. But the glory, of, the beauty of this is you don't have to. You could do it at any level. If you're just starting out, you could do it in close. Like okay. You could, you know, so that's what we're going to do here today. So, so in close, if you guys are out there, come join us. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to just start All right. with... Walking in place. Okay. Now the key, the, the key. number one key is you have to choose a goal. If okay. you don't have a goal, it's not gonna work. All right, so I've got a goal. You got a goal? I've got a goal. Will you share it? Oh. Okay, well, it's kind of a commercial, so I can't really do that. But let's just say I'm working on a project and I wanna see it succeed, so. Okay, so you've got a vision. I've you know what it vision. looks like. So I want you to put it in front of you. And okay. You're, so you're walking, All right. and you see it. It's right there. It's right you're there. like wanting to go for it. And I want you to imagine you're getting closer okay. and closer. You're almost there. It's starting to happen. You could feel that energy getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna step in as if you've okay. already achieved it. So okay. it's almost like you're telling your brain it's already happened. And we're going to celebrate that. So we're going to do All a little right. celebration jump. So oh. we're just going to jump up and back and jump, jump up. All right. And it's okay if you don't have it exactly right. <laughs> it's not about that. But what's the key is how would it feel if you achieved that? How would it feel? How would you'd, you feel? You'd be celebrating. I, I, I be, would be celebrating. You would be celebrating. So get that because you want to emotionally connect Absolutely. to it. All right. So emotionally, like you'd be so excited. You'd be so happy. What else would be coming to you as a result? Ooh. All right. We're having Maybe success. I'm loving this. Maybe there's more money. Maybe there's <laughs> more happiness. Maybe there's more fulfillment. Maybe you're helping people. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. So you really want to imagine that. Okay. Now we're going to step back. Okay. So let's look at what do you have right now to make that happen. And we're okay. going to do just a little mini squat with a little bicep curl. So we're gonna, actually not a squat, sorry, lunge. Lunge, yes. okay, got it. So we're it. lunging out, and you're gonna pull in, what is it that you have? Because, you know, whenever we do a big thing, everybody's just like, all the things you don't have, but you have so much. So what do you have to make this goal happen? All right, so you're taking what you have now, you're what you have now. now, and you're holding it So what do you in. have? All it right. could be desire. All right. It could be an idea. It could be a business plan. It could be resources. It could be help. Mm-hmm. Name one I've thing you point. have. One thing I, I, you know what? I have a circle of friends who are very powerful. Fantastic. So, so pull it. that in. All right. And when you come from that place, one more. Okay. Excellent. Then you can feel what it's like. Because when you start from a place of empowerment, then your brain starts working in a very different way and you can access different resources. So let's I'm look at- I'm starting to feel perky here, you know? Do you actually, yeah. I actually feel this, I'm like, oh, this you is You're really like, oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. we're gonna reach out. All right. So what's one more thing that maybe you need to pull in mm -hmm. to make this happen? Can I reach for cash? Sure. <laughs> Actually, you can. Investors. No. I have done this with people who've gotten investors really? after class. I've had somebody walk out of a class and get a client. I've okay. had people get investment money. It's crazy how powerful it is right. when you start to so see it. Investors. So see it. Like All really right. see that money and really feel it. You're <laughs> pulling it closer. You're getting it. I love it. Pull it in. What's one more thing you might need? Pull Ooh. It. One more. I, what do I need? What do I need? I need um, to ooh. pull in. I need, I need, I need social media support. Nice. So pull it in. All right. Because what happens is when you start to put it out in your brain, we have this little reticular activating system. So when it's at the front of your consciousness, you'll attract, you'll see it. You'll see it. You'll see it. It's there. It's that red car. You want a red car and all of a sudden you see red cars because it's there. Okay. Okay. So we got, what do you have? What do you need? All right. Now we're going to go into 
Sometimes we do what's stopping you, but we're going to move beyond that. We got yes, we got to go to the last thing. We got to get more. We so we're going to go into action. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to do a little All right. jog with a little kick. You know, you're okay. kicking it down the road. What's one action you could take today to make this happen? One All action. Right. One action, one action. Um, Anything, it could be small. You know, I, I think um, I'm going to do actually some research because research yeah. is going to help give me the basis to get it done. There you go, perfect. Research is yeah. brilliant. Okay, so you're going to research how long? How long? Uh, all week. I'm going to check into it all week. I got a lot of researching to do. Okay, so I want you to see yourself. Okay. researching. See yourself researching? at your computer. Okay. You're getting it. You're learning this. You're finding out these things. And so you're watching it. You're almost there. You're almost there. And great. And now we're going to drive it home with a couple affirmations. Ready? So we're going to box. Okay. We got we to gotta wrap it up. So we're going to finish the affirmation because I want to hear about what you're up to too. Okay. Ready? Right. And I can do it. Say it out loud. Ooh. I can do, do it. it. One more. I can do, do it. it. Yes, Woo, you can. I like it. I like it. <laughs> nice. My shoulder will never be the same. That's okay. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I feel good. I feel like I feel like I'm going to be successful now. It's amazing what comes to you when you start to do it and you really connect to it. It really is a very powerful thing. Amazing things have happened for people who do yeah. it. No, I do. I, like you just feel. You start feeling the power. I love it. But and now, you're also not thinking about exercise. You're thinking about something you yeah, really want. Yeah, think about what you're doing. Yeah. So, but now I want to hear what you, I know it, one of your things you were grabbing is your new book. Yes. So we only have a minute to talk about it. I want to hear about your book. Yes. So in my new book, I talk about this process. I talk about motor size and what it does to your brain and mm -hmm. how it's, it's like the most under, like people just don't do it. We, we think through things or we read things, but we don't always get it into our minds, our bodies, and our emotions. And that is key to making things happen. And so I talk about that and I help guide people through the process so that they can have the success that they want as well. Oh, I love it. And when is the book coming out? June 1st. And where are we going to be June able to find it? June 1st and we're going to be able to find where it. Where are we going to get it? Where are we going to pull it? We're, we're pulling pull it. in Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, <laughs> Motisize, M-O-T-I-C-I-S-E dot com. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. And I think we have a few seconds that I could just ask about one other thing you do. Yeah. Which is you are a public speaker. Yes. Where do you speak? So I speak at conferences. Okay. I, I do a lot of conferences around. I'll actually do some motor size and, and I'll do that there. And I talk about how you can use movement mm -hmm. to improve decision making and problem solving and teamwork and whatnot. And so I also go into businesses. I've, I've worked at a lot of different businesses, helping teams develop this and use this as a, as a way of tapping new creative ideas. I love it. Yeah. OK. Well. Sonia Satra, thank you so much for coming today. My pleasure. Thank awesome. you for having I me. Can, I can feel the power. I feel modicized. <laughs> Great.